All right, welcome back to 3.1. Um, we've already talked about that end behavior. And so now in this video, we want to figure out what's going on in between. So the gaps between those arrows will vary for each polynomial. So let's talk about things that might go on in the middle. Um, we're going to call this local behavior because it's going to be local to an area, um, but it's like the middle behavior. Um, so things we're going to look at is we're going to look at turning points. Um, right, A turning point is when the graph turns. Symmetry. Um, sometimes I look at symmetry, so I'll kind of tell you when I look at it and when I don't. Basically when it's easy to look at is when I look at it. Um, intercepts, we've done that a lot. And then a new thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the behavior at the x-intercept. That's at an S there, the x-intercepts. Um, so a little bit of vocab. Relative extrema. Extrema is probably a new word. Um, it's just an easy way to say max or min. So it's grouping them together. So we only have a single word to describe both. And that's when we have a turning point in the graph. So the point C, F of C is, um, is a turning point, is when the function changes direction. Uh, and if we have degree n, we can have up to, doesn't mean we have this many, n minus 1 turning points. So x squared can have one turning point. But if I have x to the fifth, we can have up to four turning points. So I can go up and down up to four times. We don't quite know how to find them yet, but we know they exist. Um, and in calculus, we're going to call these relative or local extremum, which is, again, just a fancy word for a minimum or a maximum. Extrema is the plural. This is a single one. Um, the fancy definition for a relative maximum is, um, of a function is if f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all the x's nearby. So f of c is my max. So that should make sense, right? It's bigger than all the other values. And so right here would be a max, right? Everything, yeah, there's some bigger values here, but the values nearby are all smaller. And then a relative minimum is the same idea, but opposite, right? A relative minimum is if the function is bigger or equal to f of c uh, for some interval nearby. So again, this isn't the smallest ever, right? There's some smaller values down here, but if I make a little window, it's the smallest value of that window. It's gonna help us find the peaks and the valleys in the graph. I have not told you how to find them and we won't always know how to find them, but we know they exist. So that was the turning points. We'll jump into symmetry. We've already covered symmetry, but I'll give you a nice shortcut for polynomials. Remember, even functions are symmetric about the y-axis, and that's plugging in negative x, we get the exact same function. f of negative x equals f of x. Um, odd functions were symmetric about the origin, and we plug in negative x, f of negative x is the opposite function. So I'm going to do the first example the long way, and then we'll do a shortcut. That works for polynomials. So let's plug in negative x for x to the 6 plus 2x squared. So negative x all to the 6 plus 2 to the negative x squared. And if we take negative numbers to even powers, they're positive, so x to the 6 plus 2x squared. So it equals the original function, meaning this function is even. And you'll notice that we actually have all even powers. So that'll actually be the shortcut for polynomials. So if we have all even powers, it'll be an even function. So what's our guess for all odd powers? Right, x would be a 1. x to the fifth. 3x to the third plus x, those are all odd powers, so this will be a odd function. You can plug in negative x, but this is a nicer shortcut. If we don't have to plug in negative x, right, we might as well save our time. 
And how about this last one? So x to the sixth is even plus seven x to the fifth, three x cubed plus x squared. So I have even and odd powers. And so it turns out when you have a mix of them, it's neither. Which means we'll have no symmetry. At least about the y axis or the origin. And again, if you plug in negative x, you'll see that neither of them work. But this is a nice shortcut for polynomials. Cool. And so then the last thing I was talking about for graphing is intercepts. We're going to add a little bit of detail to intercepts. So the bullet points are things we've kind of covered, and then I'm going to add a new thing at the end. So we've already done the y-intercept a lot, right? You just plug in 0. Every polynomial function will have a y-intercept, and that is because x equals 0 is always in the domain. So this will always exist. The x-intercepts are different. Um, there may be none, there may be one, there may be more. But that's when we set it equal to 0 and solve, right? Those were called zeros. And then the new thing is we're going to look at this new thing called multiplicity. Multiplicity is going to help me figure out the behavior of the x-intercepts. So what is multiplicity? So let's say f of c equals 0. So if c is a 0, then that means x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. Um, but it's also possible that we could have had x minus c squared or x minus c cubed, right? Any of those would give me c as a 0. Um, and that's what multiplicity is. It's the power. So the zero of multiplicity m is when x minus c is a factor with a power of m. But x minus c to the m plus 1 is not a factor, just meaning that this is the highest power you can factor out. So sometimes we call it a repeated zero with multiplicity m. Definition might be a little weird, um, so let's look at an example. So let's go ahead and find the zeros of x squared plus 6x plus 9. So that means we need a sum of 6 and a product of 9, which would be 3 and 3. And notice it's the same factor, so x plus 3 squared, which means x equals negative 3 is a 0 with multiplicity of 2. So this tells me some sort of behavior in a second. So it will have a different behavior than if it only had a 1 power. So let's look at what that behavior is. So I recommend making flashcards or something for this behavior because we're going to use this a lot. Um, but multiplicity tells us behavior at the zero. So at the, at the zero, we already know it's going through the x-axis, but what is it doing? So there's three cases. A simple zero is a power of one. So this could be like x minus two, right? x plus three, right? No power. And it's just going to go through. It's just going to pass directly through or we describe it as crosses the x-axis at c0. So c0, it just goes through. Right, it may be straight, it may have a little bit of a curve, we don't really know, right? Something like that. But it just passes through. That's probably what we expect most of the time. But there's actually different things that happen, and that's what's going to be new. So if we have... Uh, an odd multiplicity, so x minus 2 cubed, x plus 3 to the fifth, right, odd powers. Um, it's going to pass through, but it's going to be flat. So that's going to look like those x cubed graphs. So it does pass through, but it actually flattens out a little. Ah, I did not mean for that to happen. So it's just going to pause for a little bit. I like to call it like a picnic spot or something. Like the graph just pauses for a picnic. Um, so it'll just pause for a little bit. And the higher that power gets, we might remember from a couple videos ago, it gets a little flatter. So 
So it's just a little picnic spot. We're gonna take a break. It passes through, but it pauses. And then the last case is even multiplicity. So x minus two squared, x plus three, I don't know, to the sixth, right? Even powers. And this is actually, it's not gonna cross. It's just gonna be tangent. Tangent means it touches, but doesn't cross. So here's C zero. It looks like that, kind of like a parabola, right? But as the power gets bigger, it might touch for longer. Those are C zeros. So tangent means it's touching, right? It, um, but it doesn't cross through. But th those are three different ways um, zeros might look. Probably something we never thought about how zeros can look different, but they can. So multiplicity is going to tell me um, what to do at these zeros. So the remainder of this section is just doing some graphs. So let's do maybe two in this video and then break it up into another video so it's not too long. Um, so actually, let's find a polynomial before we do our first graph so we can talk about this behavior. So let's see what we need. We're going to do a polynomial with degree 5. So n equals 5, meaning whatever our graph looks like, that's the highest term, right? We don't know the rest yet. Um, 0 is a 0 with multiplicity 3. So if x equals 0, then x minus 0 is a factor to the third power, or x cubed, for multiplicity of 3. So 0, third power. And it's symmetric with respect to the origin, which means it needs to be an odd function. So we can only have odd powers. So let's see, what can we do? So we know 0 is a 0. Um, because this is only gives me a third power, it makes me think I need two more factors to get up to a fifth power. So let's see, we have x cubed, but I think I'm going to need x squared to bring me up to the fifth power. Does that make sense? So that'll give me x to the fifth. Um, but it can't be 0, so it has to be minus something because otherwise it'll just be, um, otherwise zero would have multiplicity five if it was just x to the fifth. So it can't be x to the fifth, we have to add a term. So x squared maybe minus four, and then we would have x minus two, x plus two, which would give me symmetry because I would have, we'd go through zero, and then we'd have two and negative two, which would create symmetry. And we could multiply it out to make sure it's an odd function for the respect to origin. x to the fifth minus 4x cubed. It's all odd powers, which means it is an odd function. So symmetric about origin. This is not the only solution. If you think of another one, let me know. If you wanted to graph it, um, we're going to do a lot of graphing, but the things we look at again are n behavior. So x to the fifth of degree of five means we are odd, so we go down and up. We have an odd power with a positive coefficient, so it looks like that. And then I would probably just go through those zeros and. Looks like it just goes through them. The only thing I screwed up is maybe this should be a little flatter for a multiplicity of three. But this is just a sketch. I'm gonna do graphing in a second. I just wanted you to find the polynomial. Um, you could have done minus five, you could have done plus three, right? There's lots of options that you could have done. The main idea is we needed x cubed for the multiplicity of 3, and then we needed x squared to make it degree 5. And then really this last piece could have been anything, plus 5, right? 
it could have been plus nine, right? These would all create different graphs, but they would all fit the properties given, minus four. So this part was required. This could have been lots of options. A little tricky. I think after we do a couple graphs, it gets a little bit clearer. So I didn't graph this one because I didn't want to do too much in one example. So we will graph in the next one. So let's actually graph. Let's check this all out. So let's start, let's go through this checklist. So we'll start with end behavior. End behavior means we look at the leading term. So x cubed minus 4x, the leading term is x cubed. So what I do with my graph is I just kind of put the end behavior in the corner. So we have an odd power positive coefficient. So it goes down and up. You can just go back a couple pages to check that. So maybe make flashcards for that as well so you can just do that really fast. So I just sketch it in the corners to kind of take note of the end behavior. What else do we want to know? Symmetry. Is there symmetry? Yeah, it's all odd powers, so it's an odd function. So it's symmetric about the origin. So that'll help us graph. And then the last case is let's find the intercepts and the behavior. So let's just plug in zero first. F of zero is zero, oops, so we know we go through zero, zero. Um, let's do the x-intercepts, where, that's where the behavior is, so we're gonna set it equal to zero. I can factor out x and we get x squared minus four, so that would be x, x plus two, x minus two. So I get three zeros, I get x equals zero, negative two and two. They're all multiplicity of one, meaning they all just cross. So negative two, positive two, and we're just gonna kind of cross through. So we start down here, we're gonna cross through negative two, two. I don't know how high it goes, we'll talk about that later, but it has to turn. So we're just sketching now. We don't know where that highest point is, but we know it exists. Um, right, we have to have a low point because the only way to go from 0, 0 back to 2 is we have to turn. We do not know where we turn yet. That is a future problem, but we know they turn somewhere and we go up. And so the end behavior matches what we said originally. So hopefully this helps with graphing. I did not expect you to understand the graphing in example 8. My goal in example 8 was just finding a function with properties. Um, so hopefully this helps with graphing a little. Um, we'll talk about turning points later, mostly calculus, but we can do some of them here. But the main thing we're getting is we are getting the end behavior. We know what happens in the corners, and we know what happens at the zeros. So that should be the same for everyone. And you'll see nice symmetry about the origin here. Cool. So I'll finish up the graphs in the next video.